Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I congratulate you for your valuable work in supporting informal carers in Greece and for organizing today's meeting to discuss needs of young carers. I am truly sorry that I cannot be with you today. Let me start by saying that I am fully aware of the very difficult situation of patients in Greece due to the underfunding of the health system, the declining workforce with many young doctors leaving the country, and the slow adaptation to modern scientific, technological, and social requirements. This puts an enormous pressure on the remaining doctors and nurses, particularly in hospitals, amounting to excessive working hours and seriously affecting the quality of health care provided. The need for long-term care is growing. At the same time, the supply of carers is shrinking due to social and demographic changes. Against this background, informal carers are an enormous resource. Over 100 million people in Europe care for a family member or a friend. In fact, around 80% of care is provided informally usually as unpaid work, and Greece is no exception. The provision of informal care relies heavily on family members, and as women make up a significant majority of carers, there is a strong gender dimension attached to the issue. In some European Union countries, understaffing and lack of nursing personnel is putting even more pressure on family members to provide informal care during hospitalization. Of course, caring for a loved one can be a rewarding task, but it can also have challenging financial, social, and health consequences. Many carers take long absence from work or drop out of the labor market altogether because they cannot cope. This does not only lead to greater financial hardship, it also reduces their pension entitlements due to lower social security contributions. Furthermore, many carers suffer from stress, depression, and social isolation. This can increase health and welfare costs due to carers' physical and mental health problems. Countries do, however, vary greatly in the extent to which informal carers are supported by public policies. Last year, European leaders jointly proclaimed the European pillar of social rights, affirming 20 rights and principles for all Europeans. The goal is to build together a more social, accessible, and inclusive Europe. Access to affordable and good quality long-term care is one of the pillar's principles. Already in April 2017, the European Commission adopted the Directive on Work-Life Balance, which is a key deliverable of the European pillar of social rights. This initiative aims at modernizing the existing European Union legal framework in the area of family-related leaves and flexible working arrangements. It reaffirms that work-life balance does not only concern parents, but all workers with caring responsibilities. It also encourages a better sharing of caring responsibilities between women and men. For example, the Commission advocates a new entitlement to five days of carer's leave per worker per year, compensated at least at sick pay level, as well as a right for all carers to request flexible working arrangements. In addition, a range of complementary non-legislative measures, such as monitoring and funding, is intended to support persons who decide to take on caring responsibilities. In Greece, the European Social Fund supports measures to reconcile family and professional life, education support for children with disabilities, as well as daycare centers for both people with disabilities and the elderly. 
Let's work together to make progress and provide persons who cannot care for themselves with the help they need. Thank you.